being here. It's really nice to see so many familiar faces and so many new faces too. My name is Drew and I'm the Museum Programs Coordinator here at the Montana Natural History Center. Um, and it has been so lovely having Good Hills with us for the last few weeks. Um, and it's also just lovely having, I mean, every artist we've had here in the last few years. As someone who does not identify as an artist, um, it is myself, it is so nice to just like have fresh new perspectives, have people who come from different places, work with different media, um, and just get to come here, see what we have, um, and incorporate what we do into um, what they do. And so it's just been such a treat having Gunhild here, hearing a bit about um, the history of her work and what drew her to Montana, and then getting some kind of sneak peeks um, at what she's working on and how it's related to this place in particular and Montana in general. Um, so we're really happy to get to partner with Open Air for the last few years. And I'm happy to do it again next semester too. Um, I should say that if some of you are new here and you're interested a bit more in the kinds of things that we do at the Montana Natural History Center, um, please help yourself to, um, we've got some magazines up at the front. We have a magazine that comes out twice a year and you're welcome to grab some. And then we've also got some brochures that talk a bit about what we do and our membership. Um, and please feel free after Ken Hilt's um, presentation to spend some time exploring our exhibits too. And definitely let me know if you have any questions. So thanks again so much for being here. Hi everybody, my name is Kelly Sinner and I am the program coordinator at Open Air. And um, I'm really thrilled to get to introduce Goon Hill tonight. It's been a real pleasure getting to know her over the last month, and I'm just so excited to see what she has to show for us tonight. So, Goon Hill Lean is a Norwegian visual artist living and working in Kongsberg. Okay. Uh, her work addresses themes connected to various aspects of social and environmental issues. Goon Hill uses a variety of media, including drawing, photography, painting, and installations. Careful, carefully utilizing the medium and technique that best illustrates the concept she wishes to depict. The images she creates are often based on a collection of subjective infrastructures containing fragments from environments, photographs, old family pictures, and found objects. The interaction of these raw materials generates new meanings. Gunhild works in an international arena and has, in recent years, carried out art projects in Portugal, Mexico, Japan, and England, and Montana. Um, many of these projects have addressed environmental issues, including the relationships between primeval forest, painting, and digital photography. So, thank you very much. Uh, okay, I'm not going to continue in Norwegian. <laughs> But I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here at the National History Museum and I'd like for you uh, to this kind of uh, artist talk. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. And uh, the first part, I'm going to try to uh, present myself a little bit, what I've been doing, working on, uh, previous work, and then afterwards I'm going to talk about what I've done here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, this project uh, who brought me to Montana, I've, I've uh, named, I've titled uh, Hidden Truth. But that I was going to come back to, the reason for that. Um, but, uh, yeah. I, 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 am, um, I am an artist, I'm a visual artist, but I also work at the University of Inland University. There I work also with uh, game art. And uh, I will say also when you uh, are in such a kind of institution that you, are, um, you work with different kinds of work with art with this different uh, perspective. Uh, but that could also be very complementary. Uh, uh, so I work with uh, art and design from different perspectives uh, to art practice. Or making uh, artist development work also through 
didactic work uh, as a supervisor or lecturer. Also write some papers about art. Here you can see a little bit of my, some of my works from here in Montana. Um, and so in the university I work together with the, the technical coders and then uh, we and the students produce, make production in, in games. And, and also, I would say also in, uh, that visual art and design have a role also in the practice of development uh, of uh, computer games. Particularly now when we are kind of, uh, putting in a new master also that we're going to have uh, more of a serious game that is more to do, not to do with entertainment but also to do with teaching and design. But uh, I think it's nice as an artist to use kind of different, uh, uh, your different competence in a different kind of uh, context. Now I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about um, my earlier art project, uh, just get a little bit impression about that. Yeah, here also you can see that kind of uh, how we also using the sketch or the drawing to explore. I think yeah, I'm very into that. Uh, uh, the visual language is a different language than the, than the written language. So it is a kind of a language that you have to kind of uh, practice and also develop. And I also like that kind of exploration you can do with the visual language. Also, I, I understand as a naturalist, also using quite a lot of drawings. But that's also there's a kind of tradition also within that. So then I'm going to see a little bit about earlier artworks. So here we can see some uh, artworks we have done together with uh, uh, the artist Stuart Ian Frost. He's over here present here tonight. Yeah. Um, there's a project we were involved in in the, the University of California, Berkeley. It was called Outside Converge, which is a connection between science and art. Uh, it, uh, um, accumulated in a, in a science sector work, but also in an exhibition in, in Washington. Uh, the other uh, work here is in England. We did some in an, uh, in an old quarry, kind of made an installation uh, at, with a dust work. And here last year we did uh, this project in Switzerland uh, with, uh, in an art, art And here is from, uh, yeah, that's not no. No. <laughs> uh, from Japan, uh, it's a residency. And here you can see I was working together with a puppet theatre there, it's interesting. And also working a bit with tab tableaus there because they have a kind of very, uh, how do you say, a, a very uh, um, so that they have a very uh, So they have a kind of very, uh, uh, they're still using brushwork, even though a very advanced technology in you know, Japan, they're still kind of very sensitive towards their kind of brush, brush using brush strokes and painting still. So I think that's quite interesting. And so you could see that in that kind of these tableau from this puppet theater. So it was kind of uh, nice and beautiful to, to be there and work, and I'd really like to go back there. Uh, I also worked a lot with um, visually, I was exploring visually memories. And uh, here is some, some, of, some of that. Um, uh, it also refers to, uh, for example, the book of uh, Roland Barthes, Paul Lucia. He says that uh, the photographs uh, grabs up with his immediate sense of reality through his aura here and now. In, in this way, we also carry with a, it also carry with a feeling of melancholy. In the photograph, life has stopped. The experience it conveys of corporeality and physical fascinations is linked to a specific moment that has passed. In extension of this, it becomes obvious to form ideas about how the photo photographs, together with other images, formally stores a kind of infrastructure of fragment of fragments of memories. And also, it's a bit the same. I've been working there also here in in uh, in Montana. But also, that's interesting with with memories. Also, it's also that it's it kind of it's foggy. It's not so clear always. So perhaps we could also go to the next one. 
And this was also a project I did in Portugal. It was, um, uh, I used the kind of anthropological methodology. I, there was, yeah, I went down and, and took photographs of the whole village, about a little bit over 20 people, <laughs> and then uh, uh, burnt them into, uh, into cork, the material, local material. It's kind of, uh, yeah. And I think it's, it was interesting also to, uh, to kind of uh, write their names and what they did and, uh, and uh, a little bit like Constable when he was, went out in the nature to paint his paintings, he kind of was very into weather reports that he was kind of as, as much as a painter as a kind of weather man, <laughs> writing carefully what kind of uh, weather condition uh, that was. And I was trying to do that with the kind of uh, and also kind of, it is interesting and also a bit sad that this kind of document of that, that time in space that many of these people uh, uh, don't live anymore because the village was a lot of older people. But um, it is interesting to use this kind of cork materials because it is kind of very like skin uh, itself. So it's kind of, to use that kind of burning technique, the thermography is quite interesting. That, uh, used on that kind of natural material. It, it's good also because it's a source that uh, renews itself every uh, 15 years, you know, it's kind of renewed. Uh, so you can kind of, yeah. Um, so this, uh, this uh, installation, uh, part of it hangs in a museum in Porto, in Portugal. I think I had this in a meeting room for a while, but I think it was too distracted to have in these places. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So this is an exhibition in uh, uh, in uh, Mexico, visualized and visible. This was kind of about relationship between fine boys painting and digital photography. And I saw they put uh, the poetry there. Put a lot of emphasis on kind of environment and environmental issues and things like that. But uh, because there was so much smoke. In Xalapa, where this kind of uh, university town of uh, Veracruz was, uh, but it was um, so uh, you couldn't see actually. Uh, there was this beautiful uh, landscape uh, with this kind of uh, really climate here, yeah, with uh, with, uh, with snow on it, and you couldn't see it. I think uh, we only saw it the last day, so it was nearly like coming to Montana this time because it was so much smoke. <laughs> But then it cleared up quicker here. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, and that's also part of this. And also, this is kind of more also yeah. kind of, uh, showing a, a, a graphic kind of uh, story about uh, uh, slaughtering pigs in Portugal. And that's also because um, when they became an EU member, that was kind of forbidden, it was kind of industrialized and it's a kind of long tradition they have in that country to kind of, uh, it's a family gathering, they have a party, a feast for three, three four days uh, doing this and, and it's a kind of, it's all that culture that belongs, you know, and it's a kind of way for, for families to get more, uh, more cheap food. Of but, uh, in other, uh, other industrial countries, they are kind of far from that kind of whole home slaughtering, even though it's not such a long time. But it's kind of interesting with that kind of uh, uh, It is quite cruel, but it's also quite beautiful in one way, why I saw it, because of this kind of cultural approach to that. Okay, next one. Yeah. So this, I'm uh, going to go quick. This is some graphics work, so I'm interested in uh, always the visual I'm interested in. I'm not going to go into that anymore. I'll do the next one. <clears throat> yeah. um, so, through my work, then, the, the, the meeting between different types of visual media, which is a common thread, that I just want to say that. Um, uh, although I think everything is pictures in a way. It's, uh, it's kind of how, it's in a way, how we see the world. I'm not going to go into all that. Thing, yeah. And also, I agree then with uh, John Barrow, who drew. Next one. That uh, seeing actually the visuals comes before words. And I also think that's also very uh, actually now we have had a, a, a 
visual kind of um, turn, which we call it in Academia, or um, it's not me seeing that, saying that. It's Mitchell, one of the American uh, art uh, philosophers, uh, calling it a visual turn, and then he refers to other more kind of linguistic turn earlier. But um, it's it's kind of like going back to the Middle e Ages when when people couldn't read and went to the church and look at imagery you know, to understand the Bible. You know, so it's a bit kind of uh, with all this kind of uh, visual. Uh, media how important it is to be aware to read images actually also in the digital area and i will also say that kind of uh, uh, advanced uh, digital art and, and other imagery could be a hard and difficult to read as for instance uh, uh, painting from from the renaissance There was also there was a pic, uh, was a project uh, I did together with the uh, the artist Stuart Post. Uh, this was to do uh, was a, uh, for a public commission in Norway. It is uh, in Norway all kind of public buildings. Uh, One point five percent of the budget goes to art. So it's a kind of nice also income for many artists also to kind of you can apply for these kind of things. So this is for this is, was a bit special because it was kind of for people with dementia. And also <clears throat> we thought about how could we kind of make them if you don't you can't read anymore and you can't kind of you still have your kind of ability to uh, with aesthetics that you could feel or use other senses. So that's why we kind of chose then wood as a material, but more kind of wood that has been kind of uh, uh, processed into walls, and then it's nice to touch, and it's the wood material is warm, and also we uh, would have a kind of bee wax on it, so you could use the other senses, you know, not only the tactile, but also the. So it can also be experienced to go into this kind of uh, structure that. Uh, that was said there. So, but I think it's important uh, if you're going to do art for that kind of that kind of group that you just kind of differ them from being different. I think it's, it's still, even though they have lost their, uh, many of them have lost their, uh, kind of ability to speak. I think it's important that you don't underestimate them. That they still have all this kind of ability to feel with other senses still, and and also could have good uh, artistic experiences, whatever level on your kind of uh, uh, cog cognitive status. So that was that. That was a kind of quick. <laughs> and now we're going to talk a little bit about this project, The Hidden Through. Uh, so uh, in my grandfather's album, that was kind of the starting point. Um, so, uh, I wanted to explore kind of uh, that more because I felt with this collection, even though there was quite a few images, you can call it a small album from Montana when he was here from uh, 1911 to 1918. But still, there was kind of very much a white man's story, the, the kind of the, uh, the settler in front of the homestead, I can say, with his uh, rifle. Uh, or on a horse, like he was, uh, like sheep farming around. And also, you know, I went around and said, oh, my grandfather was a cowboy, and everybody thought about uh, kind of the popular culture, and about uh, <laughs> yeah, very kind of attractive cowboys and things like that. But this is kind of like the real life cowboy, how it really was kind of more down to earth, a human, perhaps. <clears throat> so it's interesting. Uh, um, to try and time out then if it was possible. Yeah, go further to that. Yeah. yeah. And then I started to do have this residency and been out on the prairie and we have also been up at Lincoln and I put out a kind of spy camera there also to kind of explore more of the uh, of the the life in Montana, uh, going in going in his footsteps of course. And also, um, 
planning also to go out sort of further out on the prairie. Uh, and as you, some of you might have uh, explored, that I kind of made a, a three D frame figure of my grandfather out of some of these um, that photo there. That was just, that was kind of this. We don't know who the photographer is or anything. <clears throat> but I I started to to uh, wanted to make a video book to see if I can depict kind of his figure uh, in, a, in a way also to explore <laughs> more. So uh, next, so here I kind of drew that uh, his image or kind of made a turnaround, which you call it in a digital a game in the world <laughs> that you need to do kind of from different sides. Also, di often when you do an architecture, for instance, you have to kind of do a building from different sides and data to be able to read it. So that's where the starting point was after the photography. And then I put it into the free, this free kind of uh, uh, free source uh, old software program, Blender, which is very good. I recommend everybody can uh, download it and <laughs> scope, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of tutorials on that, so <laughs> we're all good to be, uh, yeah, um, which is good. And uh, there's also some more of that uh, process. It takes time, of course, you know. So, um, yeah, and of course, perhaps it also affects the, the fact that I am working in a, in a game art, art environment, uh, or in that I kind of do just choose this kind of media in a way. And I think also perhaps that makes it a bit more. Uh, it makes it also contemporary, I would say, because young people they are kind of into that kind of language also. But uh, but it also amazing that you can kind of um, do that digitally and also be able to and also to then print it out. And I, as you can perhaps see afterwards, that I put that model, the, the printed model of my grandfather. Uh, here is a process. Uh, can you take next one? Please? Yeah, there's a process you could, he had to, it was so, actually so big because you could go down into the town here in the library to that kind of play and make a desk, make a space and make a 3D model, but they operate quite small, you know, only four or five hours and then they're going to be kind of, it's very limited what you can do, but uh, this took, uh, take about five days, running night and day, so, so, and then it's been, uh, I was going to do it before I tried. Uh, I started to do it before I went, I must say. But uh, then we got, uh, you know, it collapsed. It's tr like I say, also in, the, uh, in that maker space, that it, uh, it's failing trying, you know, when it's uh, printing out 3D. Mm. So, but it's quite fun. <clears throat> so, it's a hidden truth that also is the investigation of the visualization of the migrant experience. Norwegian American migration stories of longing through photography and visualization has the capacity to bring the hidden truth to the surface, to question the absence of, for example, indigenous people in the histories of migration and settler activism. So that was a kind of uh, academic, very correct, not <laughs> correct uh, idea I had when I came. But then again, it's so much kind of overwhelming when you come to a new place and so many impressions and all the things you want to do. and then, I tried also that to, uh, I'm very interested in mapping, and so I got some Montana maps, also tried to kind of use the kind of uh, basket making technique the natives using also to kind of merge that uh, photography of my uh, hair in truth. Yeah. Again, uh, to see if you could have use that. Was, that was interesting also to have that kind of. It was, it was important that also the map were quite kind of uh, typographical, uh, had some 3D uh, in it. Um, you told me that uh, there's a good collection of maps in the library here, yeah. mm. which I, I have to kind of also get to. I've seen there's a lot on the net, but kind of it's better to go there, of course, to be there. Yes. Mm. So I think it's interesting how, uh, and also I used this kind of uh, uh, a representation of uh, this uh, this uh, figure um, to, and and, um, and made an image which also put some grasses from uh, uh, this 
I should have, it's, it's from England, it should have been more fair. <laughs> and also when you're using graphs, then it's kind of uh, uh, as a material to work with, and it's kind of you have to find out about it. And, and all the grasses around here, this area was kind of too brittle, it was too, probably too late in the season to use them. But also interesting to go also into find about species and find out what kind of species they're using for basket making and what kind of more is more uh, uh, useful or uh, yeah, uh, works better and practical to do so. And also the, all that knowledge uh, that lies in that uh, notion about the material and, and there's a kind of uh, <coughs> book wisdom of the, uh, called the Keith Basso. He is an anthropologist, American anthropologist. He has written a book called The uh, Wisdom Sits in Places. And I think that's so beautiful because it's kind of all that knowledge about plants and kind of uh, uh, environment and all these kind of materials and stuff, uh, which we kind of lost also when we go in and live in the cities and <laughs> all this kind of knowledge. Um, yes. And also, I tried also, can we go to the next? Also try to use that whole style also. And this will wonder how, how much you can explore also with this, for instance, with this uh, material that it was a I borrowed a book uh, here from the natural centre about uh, indigenous plants and how they use this kind of uh, uh, used it uh, uh, for mats and different kind of things. But also there was a nice kind of uh, mythology story uh, how these kind of stripes on what came along, you know. And it was something, yeah. so I don't, I, don't, I don't want to repeat that story, but it's kind of all these kind of stories and mythologies of it that also belongs when you go in just look at one species. But it's very kind of, when you are kind of, it's so easy to go on the surface, but when you go into things and go deeper down, then you understand there's a different story there. It's very interesting. <coughs> so then I also went over to the University of, with that kind of the right collection. collection. And I was also amazed with all these kind of the, the birds and the, the, um, the, the colors and also at, not at least kind of that uh, way of uh, using um, uh, the way of using kind of the, uh, how they kind of have to kind of prepare the birds or certain things to get them, them into the kind of cupboards and and uh, yeah and uh, it also I think it's an interesting also visually to see kind of the differences when you have them all together and it's kind of repetition in art there's also kind of very decorative kind of uh, it kind of it drew, 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 drews you in in a way and also it's I kind of like to look not only at the at the visual, but also at the kind of methodology that, that they are using. I think that is a, something you can borrow in the arts. So even though mimesis is something that perhaps always has been done, you know, to kind of make repetition, uh, representation of art something always artists have done. Uh, to be a naturalist is quite an active world in biology, but when it comes to art, I don't know, then it's kind of, oh, you're you really doing natural world, you know, really <laughs> uh, copying. But it's not, uh, I think it's um, it also, um, a representation of nature could also be kind of contemporary. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not necessarily to be kind of traditionally. But, so I think that's also, yeah. Uh, so then also you could use that kind of uh, visual and also uh, methodology to observe and compare and experiment and analyze and I wish I only had more days I could kind of play around with all these materials because that was a wonderful opportunity uh, you know and then you could see things you know kind of um, um, make things uh, uh, more um, uh, strange it's a kind of alienation of them because you see them because you put together things that you, uh, in, a, in a way that you haven't didn't expect. I think also then you perhaps start to look at things in a new way, in a different way. Perhaps. It is also, also uh, quite absurd uh, in many ways. So 
I might be calling myself an atomist after all. Uh, so here are some of those. Um, the next one. Also, I wanted to actually to do more painting, uh, but it was a bit because of when I'm painting, I'm kind of, I'm a bit kind of uh, expressive and a bit <laughs> massive. <laughs> so I thought it would be too kind of pretty, you know, to go. So I kept on drawing on my on my uh, iPad, but uh, and painting. And what's interesting also with the, when you're doing a, a digital media is that the kind of the disciplines kind of come together in other way. You don't need to kind of the whole equipment thing. You have everything in one place. And what's interesting also is that perhaps the kind of limits between what you call a drawing or painting and the, these kind of uh, disciplines that we are so very concerned about also vanish in a way you are not so kind of into that you're not so interested in that anymore because everything goes <laughs> uh, so it, they are so close connected in a way so all these are uh, but i think it's important also that you can also paint digitally also if we use that uh, and then also if it, uh, it's always a kind of question if, if it's drawing or if it's painting, what is it when you are kind of using uh, mixed media or digital. Uh, but it was kind of very convenient of course to sit here and use, uh, even though the problem is also when you're working on an iPad and it's kind of, uh, perhaps your work also going to be more ephemeral because it disappears into your, so it, you have to kind of wait to get it printed out and then if you get it printed out and it's not a good, Prints, you know, you know, it's not a good bag for it, and the particular dark colors is an issue with it. So it's a lot of issues. So that's, that's why I'm still kind of perhaps mixing also, making mixed media. Okay, the next one. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that's what I was into a little bit about. Uh, even though, even the Greek, they also uh, like them, uh, they were into mimesis. But they often talk more about uh, the poetry, about me. but still, um, I thought it was very positive to mimesis. That is, was his, he considered this as a creative activity, as an action. Um, he believed also that he could imitate it two different ways. And what he imitated was or what is, or was, or was, or imitated things as they should be or should not be. And I think it's also interesting to. Uh, also, how how I work with that collection of, of imagery, also with, with my grandfather, or with the kind of the memes that they were. you can't you I try to reshape him in a way, but still it's just a memes. It's still it's just a kind of a, a, a representation of of him. Some kind of studies I tried to put together just because I was uh, I. Like aesthetical things, <laughs> of course, you, you can't avoid it when you are staying here. You are a bit kind of getting a bit kind of it's so much to look at here, it's kind of interesting to possibly put it together. Next one, yeah, also, it was good also with the when you have three dimensions, you can also arrange them and put them into, and it's nice with these kind of layers because it always gets that notion about, uh, about uh, memories and things like that. And then uh, I wanted to try to put it into the collection, which I thought uh, went. Uh, and I was a bit surprised also that some of the people working here didn't <laughs> discover it. <laughs> they didn't get to see it at all. <laughs> so, um, but I must say, also, it's not my grandfather, it's a representation of my grandfather. <laughs> And it's not a, somebody said it's a kind of a, a small like a little. But um, it's quite interesting. I think also uh, many artists also they do that uh, in, in museums or they could, uh, you know, they jam the collection, you know, they uh, make a response to the collection, which I as I try to do. And also my meaning of it is also perhaps that um, it's not the notion about the human being kind of being like, uh, the Christianity thinks that 
God is uh, the human being on the top of the chain, and we are uh, placed there by God to provide nature, and uh, you know, but we are more uh, part of a whole. That's why I see, and that's why my statement with putting him in amongst all the animals, he's a kind of part of the whole kind of. Uh, it's not kind of somebody who comes in and, yeah. So that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, and also you can see that also, uh, I think it's so much interesting research going on also that people are more kind of interesting how uh, tree things and how fish communicate and you have all these kind of, so it's a, a, a totally different thinking when it comes to animals, you know, it's not kind of, looking down and thinking there's something out there. They also have features, so they have qualities or uh, properties that uh, we, have, we, 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 can, uh, we kind of not, not hidden knowledge, we are arrogant to it. Uh, so here is Blackie's uh, car, <laughs> that's funny enough. It's so interesting, you know, because it's so wonderful to be in this landscape and then you have a kind of, and then you see the mirror as a kind of reflection of the same landscape. So. It's overwhelming, this kind of big, uh, uh, big uh, kind of, uh, when you compare to Norway, even though we have a kind of, it's very kind of monumental, this landscape. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, so you, you can't kind of, when you are in it, you are really in it. That was kind of my statement with this picture here. And also, the next thing now is the kind of, um, I try to put him out now on the tray, so that's mm -hmm. the next stage. I, I, this is in Lincoln, uh, I tried to, and I, also to make that work, uh, I'm also using technology. <laughs> I'm using kind of uh, a tilt shift lens technology also to, then it becomes like a model uh, kind of, so uh, it has to do with, uh, of course, the kind of clarity of the, uh, uh, but it's quite interesting to use that in it. So, kind of, so then it makes him easier to put him in, you know. Uh, so I'm gonna go up now, we're gonna drive up, uh, out of the prairie and take some, put it in, put it out of the station <laughs> to see what happens. That would be interesting. <laughs> That's the next, and then I'm going to post that. Yeah. And here, um, um, because of that idea that I had with the kind of um, making this kind of uh, widen this collection or that kind of uh, imagery from my grandfather. That almost, uh, I also wanted to kind of have some cooperation, and I was so uh, uh, happy to meet kind of uh, uh, Nora Chaya artist at this time. He has been up in uh, uh, Blackfoot uh, Parkways, Country Park, up in, uh, in Lincoln, and uh, we just finished the work there. So it's, we're going to have some kind of uh, drawing uh, collaboration and uh, dialogues. Yeah. So that's it. because also in this project he did up there, he also was kind of explored native persons in his work. Of course, that's natural for him to do. But also, I, there's something also I'm interested in, like I did with a, a little bit with a kind of uh, um, with a basket influence or the mapping or that kind of or the plants. So I kind of try to do it, it in my perspective. But he has, a, of course, a whole different kind of. Uh, um, kind of um, uh, tradition or culture he comes from, so that would be interesting to develop. So I'm really looking forward to that, uh, to do that. So it's a kind of, well, here also are some images from the spy camera so far. <laughs> but you are so, uh, you know, it's, 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 this is not a really <laughs> from you, because uh, you are so used to your wildlife around and take it for granted. But it's, no, 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 it isn't. <laughs> But I hope uh, it's going to sneak in uh, some um, some uh, bears and uh, yeah cats and things like that. I heard rumors about <laughs> in that area, so I might be lucky. Okay. Um, so what happened to my grandfather? To all that, and Yes, he he uh, went back to Norway because his, he was actually married when he came, he, even though he didn't tell them the notice when he came that he was. <laughs> I don't know if it was a good thing, but that was a good one. But um, so then he married my grandmother. Uh, she was quite young. You know, this, is, um, this is an old photograph, and this story about this photograph is from this little boy here. It's not my father, it's my uncle. Uh, because two and uh, 
dømme held og helter i Champions Court. Man var der dag i kort for Champions and uh, three of them, uh, you know, because the farm wasn't big enough to uh, have enough kind of land for, for them to live on, so they went out and took uh, the education. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, but uh, the, the boy, my uncle Steiner, he was back. And he was a bit kind of, he was the one who stayed uh, behind, was left, and he kind of perhaps uh, I don't know, he had a kind of certain character, so he was kind of a very shy person and very kind of sorry, quiet and he kept himself to himself and he never married. He became, uh, become uh, uh, not a carpenter but a uh, uh, plumber, so but, uh, when he died, because he never married and we didn't know much about it, he had this kind of photograph in his wallet of his mom and dad and it was so well used. So I think it's just so, it's a nice story about photography as well, um, which basically impact it has on, on our lives, you know, that we can, it is kind of a very kind of, we don't tear this apart, you know, when you somebody you love or, you know, and it's, uh, so it's, I think it's, uh, yeah. So, and then, the yeah, last thing, this is my daughter, this is a very typical Norwegian, you know, somebody told me that you are using uh, the flag, the American flag, so much, but, uh, but we are also using the flag a lot, you know. And so you can see we have the same the colors on our flag: white, red, and blue. And uh, I think there's also 35 other countries with the same colors. <laughs> <laughs> not very special, is it? Perhaps <laughs> we think it is. It is not. <laughs> So, but uh, the sad question is, uh, you know, she has these kind of uh, national costumes on, you know, we have that kind of tradition still with using the beautiful broderies and kind of wool and uh, linen and, and so they're silver. And so it's kind of nice, and uh, depending on where you come from in Norway, you have that kind of uh, different uh, designs on your bean and <laughs> So uh, that we still hold alive, you know, with all these kind of cheap. It's a nice contrast to all this kind of cheap clothes from China, so it's, a, it's quite nice to do. So, and then I want to thank you. Yeah, open air, stony. Yeah, thank you very much for not giving up on me. I was hoping you were. And uh, and Kelly, it's very nice to meet you. Yeah. And uh, thank you for your help. And uh, to uh, Montana History of Natural History Center, it's been a pleasure. Particularly, Drew, it's so nice to work together with you. Thank you very much. And also, Angela, but she is not there, Philip, right? So, much in New Zealand, also. It's great, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.